Hi guys, this is Miss Tara with the Niles Library and we are talking about an awesome invention today. We're talking about this man, John Deere. Now have you heard that name before? Something big and green plows the fields. John Deere tractor. So this is the John Deere the man and he didn't actually invent the tractor. He invented a plow that all the farmers wanted to use because it was the best plow. And from there is where the John Deere company got the name for the tractors. Okay, so let's learn about John Deere, that's who, by Tracy Nelson Maurer, illustrated by Tim Zellner. Back in John Deere's day, long before tractors and other newfangled contraptions, Americans dug the land with the same kind of plow that farmers had used as long as anyone could remember. That plow was in the 1830s, was surely less than perfect, but it worked. So who would want to change it? John Deere, that's who. But John didn't set out to build a new plow right away. He was just another young blacksmith from Vermont. A hard-working one, mind you. His fine skills earned him buckets of praise. Still, times were tough, and folks sometimes failed to pay him. John's business struggled. Then disaster struck. Hitch forge burned to the ground. Of course, John rebuilt it. Then another fire. He was soon out of cash and out of luck. John needed a fresh start. So with a few of his best ironworking tools, he joined the stream of pioneers headed west in 1836. He planned to send for his wife and children when he settled. Luck started to shine on him when he arrived in Grand Detour, Illinois. The little town needed a blacksmith to fix broken pots and pans, horseshoes and pitchforks, and shovels and plows. Lots and lots of plows. John quickly built a forge. Smork poured from the slow fire that burned from sunrise to sunset, and sometimes longer than that. Clang, clang, clang. The man was a workhorse, hammering red-hot iron to repair tools so that they were good as new, even better than new. John also fixed farmers' heavy iron plows, again and again. Stubborn twisted roots deep under the prairie banged up the iron blades. Even worse, the thick soil rich, the thick rich soil the farmers called gumbo in a not so nice way, stuck to their plows like gummy black little snowballs. Farmers had to stop every so often to scrape the gumbo off with a paddle. That made a day's work much longer. John heard the farmers complain again and again. I reckon I'm cleaning that plow pret never near few steps. It's a gone take me forever a day to plow my claim. Uff da, this heavy plow wrenches the dickens out of my back. They were tuckered out. Some farmers talked about high talent back to east where the soil was sandy and easy to till. John didn't want to lose his customers. Truth be told, he missed his family and he had a debt to pay. That's when John set his mind to building a better plow. He tried new plow angles. He studied how the gumbo clung to the tiny pits in the iron. It's a fair guess that John already knew of other plow designs that called for lightweight steel rather than heavy iron. But steel was rare that far west and too pricey. Then one day at the sawmill in 1837, John found a broken steel saw blade that he could take back to the smithy. There, John chiseled off the saw's teeth and cut the steel into the shape of a plow's blade. He curved it over a log so it would shrug off soil. Then he polished the steel as shiny as his mother's sewing needles. Those needles could slip through calico like a hot knife through butter. Maybe a shiny plow would slice through gumbo. The town's families gathered at a local farmer's field to watch John test his gleaming self-polisher. They didn't expect much, but who amazed them at all? John Deere, that's who. Stories of the day claimed he dug 12 rows as neat as you please. Many farmers were still leery. John built several plows for farmers to try in their own fields. Test after test, John's smooth steel cut plow cut so quickly and easily, it truly hummed down the rows. In time, customers began asking for Mr. Deere's singing plow. 
You can bet John was happy to send for his family in 1838, a mighty relief to settle his debt five years later. In another five years, the entire Deer family moved to Moline, Illinois. John wanted his company closer to the Mississippi River for better water power and easier deliveries. All the while, John kept tinkering with the plow design to keep his customers happy. Under his leadership, John's company sold tens of thousands of singing plows and other horse-drawn equipment. Farmers plowed the prairie soil faster than ever. They planted more than enough food for their families, selling ex extra crops. Farming grew into a business, and the prairie's fields of grain became known as America's handbasket. Who changed the plow for America's farmers? Who changed a nation forever? John Deere, that's who. Here's some fun facts about the real John Deere. He was born February 7, 1804, and died May 17, 1886. John Deere wasn't the first American to tinker with plow designs. Before he became president, Thomas Jefferson sketched plans in 1788 for a new plow to turn the soil on his hilly plantation. Others, such as Jethro Wood in 1819, tried cast iron designs for plows with replaceable parts. But John was the first to blend the best ideas about plow designs and steel parts to make a better tool for America's thick prairie soil. Many farmers who used wooden plows in the 1830s believe iron or steel would poison the soil. John let them test his steel plow in their fields to show it was safe. Before John Deere, most blacksmiths made plows one at a time as farmers placed their orders. Deere and Company offered ready-made plows and sold them in branch houses across the Midwest. Pioneers bought their self-polishers at these stores as they traveled on their westward journey. John Deere was the mayor of Moline for two years after he retired. He never lived on a farm. John Deere didn't invent the tractor. He died 32 years before his company bought the Waterloo Gasoline Engine Company and began selling Waterloo Boy Model R, the granddaddy of all John Deere tractors. Deere and Company has sold carriages, wagons, and even bicycles in addition to plows and other farm equipment. Today, it's one of the oldest manufacturing companies. All right, so we have got a really fun activity for you to do based on the book that we just read, John Deere and his plow. So what we've got here, I've got a tin foil pan, aluminum pan. Um, you can get it at any store. And inside I've got some grass seed because that's what I had here on hand. Um, you can also use soil, you can use sand. You can go outside in your sandbox, you can go outside and do this on a part of your garden that is just soil. Um, this is a really fun one. So I've got some, these are actually little aquarium rocks that we had here in the basement from our fish tank. And uh, so these represent the gumbo. And this grass seed that we had represents the soil that they're plowing. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna make your own plow out of any kind of materials you have and you're going to test your results. So I am going to test a bunch of different kinds of things. I'm using a popsicle stick and um, a clothespin to attach these things. So I'm going to first look at a sponge. Is a sponge a good plow? So you can put this in here and pull it aside. Is it doing anything to the gumbo? Not really. So you think a sponge is a good plow? Probably not. So let's take this off our popsicle stick. Let's try. Ooh, let's try this. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with one hand. A feather. Do you think a feather is a good plow? Let's give it a try. Is it doing anything to the gumbo? Hmm. So do you think that a feather is a good thing to use for a plow? Probably not. So I grabbed a bunch of kind of random stuff that we had in the basement. I've got a balloon, got a straw, cupcake tins, toothpicks, got a water bottle. Got some food coloring, sorry. 
I got a piece of paper. I got a pool noodle. So I just kind of walked around the library in our storage area downstairs where we keep arts and crafts and different things that we use for programming around here to see what kinds of things that I could use to make a really cool plow. Oh, I've also got Q-tips. Got my sponge. Got a bookend. Got all these things. And so you can run test after test after test to see which kind of materials, even that you have, would make the best kind of plow and see if you can make the best plow. Okay, this is a fun hands-on science experiment and I hope you have enjoyed learning about John Deere and the invention of his plow. So I hope to see you next time for another edition of Awesome Inventions, but until then, we'll see you later. Bye guys!